sure that everybody gets a chance, and if we have time, we may have a second round. Uh, the governor will be happy to answer questions in both official languages. Libre à vous de poser des questions dans la langue officielle de votre choix. Um, and uh, yeah, we have about 20 minutes, I believe. Rod over here, Rod Nickel. Hi, Rod Nickel with Reuters News. Um, <coughs> Governor Polas, I'm wondering to what extent an escalation of tariffs between the U.S. and China would put an interest rate cut for Canada on the table? And if you can answer in English and French, please. Okay, Rod, well, it's, uh, at this stage, it's impossible to predict uh, that sort of thing. Well, we've, we've uh, picked up on and talked extensively on in the NPR is that there's been a global slowdown in response to the uncertainties around uh, future trade policies. And uh, it's uh, the channel that it's, that it's affecting is investments, inv investment uh, expenditures. 47 countries have seen this slowdown. So um, uh, that's what we've got to date. The question is, you know, does an, uh, uh, an escalation, does that uh, make it a lot worse? Well, we have to watch investment deciding, decision making, and see how, how it plays out. So that's what we mean by data dependent. And we suggest that if a deal is reached, no doubt that sentiment will improve. Um, en français, uh, uh, ben, uh, on a déjà incorporé uh, les effets de, des tensions uh, de change uh, uh, depuis, uh, depuis quelques mois. Et uh, on, on regarde le processus, uh, mais on le regarde comme un uh, risque de deux côtés. Uh, un côté, c'est possible d'avoir uh, un accord entre le, le Chinois et les États-Unis. Et uh, ça va probablement hausser les investissements. En même temps, une, une escalation de ces tensions va avoir l'autre effet. Mais c'est impossible de prédire uh, la, 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 la taille de ces effets. And just to follow that up then, looking at Canada's own uh, trade dispute with China, how do you gauge the, the impact that that dispute against canola, pork, soybeans, peas, how do you assess the impact that's having on the Canadian economy? Well, at this stage, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a fairly mechanical uh, approach because uh, we know exactly which categories have been, uh, have been affected. We know exactly how big they are. Uh, but of course, uh, it's, it's more a question of what uncertainty effects could cause elsewhere in the economy. And again, it's not the sort of thing that one can guess at. Uh, of course, we, had, we know the direction, but it's a downside risk uh, to the economy. Uh, whether it's a temporary or long-lasting one, that's, that's the issue. Uh, because the inflation forecast depends on you know, longer-term processes in the economy, not just short-term shocks. Hello, uh, Ashley Robinson with Bloomberg. Uh, so you talked a lot about froth in the Toronto and Vancouver housing markets. Mm -hmm. How much froth is still there and how do you know when it's out? So the answer is we don't know. If, if, if we knew that in advance, <clears throat> it would have been a lot easier to understand how the effects would play out. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, we know from other you know, frothy housing markets in history and around the world uh, that uh, it, it the catalyst can be anything that causes the frost suddenly to exit the market. And I th for me, the most important one, if, if, you, if you look carefully at the Vancouver market, uh, you can see that before any of the, uh, these taxes on foreign buyers came in, that market rolled over. And I believe it rolled over because affordability uh, just stopped a lot of people from actually getting in. They just couldn't get the mortgage to, to enter. And so that's the, probably the most important fundamental of, of all when you have a frothy market. The limits are, unlike a financial market, if you want to make a big bet on, a, on FX or on a, on a bond, you can take leverage bets uh, much bigger than the money that you've got available. But in the case of uh, housing, you have to buy the house. You, you, you can't just speculate on it. Uh, and so, as a result, uh, that thing ran out of gas before those things went in and that those things kind of accelerated that. Um, so in the end, uh, I think we'll I think we'll know because the market will will bottom out and will begin to perform more normally relative to fundamentals. And by the way, the fundamentals are really strong. So 
um, that that really does put a floor under the under the process it's because population and job growth are really strong in both of those markets and of course interest rates are still quite attractive so there's no constraint really coming from from interest rates it's more a matter of people absorbing the G, the B20 guideline changes and what that does is temporarily brings people a certain layer of people out of the market for the house that they had in mind and they come back into it either because they chose something less expensive different location smaller whatever or they stay out of it for a while while they accumulate a bigger down payment so they can go back in uh, they still fundamentally want to buy the house. Uh, so all, again, all those conditions give you confidence that it's a matter of adjustment and after that, return to normal growth. And then I have a bit of a hypothetical question. Oh. Um, many people are calling for a reversal or a watering down of the B20 rules. If <clears throat> Aussie did do, decide to go that route and water down the rules, uh, what impact would that have on monetary policy? Well, that's a highly hypothetical. It's a almost a doubly hypothetical question, so I, I, I don't think I've, I'm in a position to answer it. Um, let's just say that the, the B20 guidelines are doing their job, as I described in my speech. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something over time that it's possible that there'll be reason to tweak them in some way, depending on the conditions in the economy. Uh, but that's not for me, uh, not for me to talk about. Martin? Uh, Governor Polaz, Martin Cash from the Winnipeg Free Press. You spoke today about um, diversifying the mortgage market and possibility as to what that might look like. How uh, engaged would you say the uh, the financial institutions in in Canada are in, you know, thinking about some of this stuff, uh, actually marketing some of this stuff, producing some of that stuff? What, what, could you talk a little bit about their response and reactions? Well, I think that um, based, based on some of the conversations I had today, uh, which of course was primarily with credit unions, uh, there is a fair bit of interest and engagement, uh, uh, interest in new models and evolving the market. Uh, but uh, that of course is just, we have to wait and see if any of that happens. Um, I observed that uh, the mortgage market today looks very much like it did when I first got a mortgage, and I can assure you that's a, a really, really long time ago. Uh, still predominantly five-year mortgages. Uh, the, what's different is the, uh, the process associated with them is much faster, there's, uh, and there's, there are brokers to help you shop around, those kinds of things. Those are, those are modest changes, but the basic contract really hasn't changed. And, um, and so I, I think that that's uh, it's unfortunate, and this is why I gave a speech on it, uh, to uh, kind of a call to arms. I think there, there ought to be more innovation, and uh, the answer, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, uh, it's not much of an answer. Um, it isn't broken. It's served us very well. I'm not trying to change it. But I do think that there are ways to make it more flexible and make it uh, Le, you know, to, to, to mitigate the, the normal risks in the system, uh, both for lenders and for borrowers. And so those things are worth uh, pursuing. Do you have a follow-up? Mm, yes, thanks. Um, you know, you, it, interesting to hear uh, Governor of Bank of Canada talk about uh, a market for mortgage-backed securities, you know, since, <clears throat> uh, you know, it just about blew up the financial world uh, a decade ago. In, in fact, um, pardon my ignorance, but is, it, is that a, a product that is um, you know, popular in the market today? Anywhere in, in the world, those, that mortgage-backed security business? Oh, yes, uh, so this is, uh, I mean, there's, there's plenty of demand for that kind of product. Um, the, uh, the difficulty when you say it blew up, it blew up uh, in, you know, in the U.S. market, that slicing and dicing financial engineering phase, where uh, people were buying a mortgage product uh, that they had no idea what was in it, no way of even finding out what was in it because of the way it had been sliced and diced multiple times. Um, and it was extraordinarily highly leveraged, uh, and people were buying it with leverage, so leverage on top of leverage. So this is why it blew up. Um, and what I've, as I've said in my talk, 
the most important ingredient of an MBS market would be the transparency around the products that are inside of the bond that you're buying. And you don't have to have your name and address. Okay? It needs it can be anonymized, but it does identify a mortgage, how long you've had a mortgage, what's your payment history been like, you know, how much is left outstanding, what you start with, those kinds of ordinary details. And so you get a sense of, yes, all, all those mortgages that I'm just about to buy in this bond fit my criteria of what I would like to invest in. And the beauty of MBS is I'm, it's not like a private loan where I'm just lending you a mortgage. Rather, it's lots of people, so it's diversified. So if one of those people lose their job and they have to walk away from their home, which would be very unfortunate, but that would just be one out of many, many mortgages inside that bond. And so that diversification means that your investment is barely, barely touched by that. That's the beauty of it. And if it's transparent, then people will buy that bond, at, of course, a risk premium relative to non-risky bonds, but not a gigantic one. You know? So that means then the, the company that's floating that bond can offer a mortgage to you or me in the uninsured space, not in the traditional space, at a reasonable price. And so it's that the kind of innovation that can, can make the market work better and diversify in the number of places where you can get a mortgage. And it's more competitive then too, right? So all those things are healthy ingredients to a marketplace. Okay, going to the back row. Right, I'm wondering, actually, I'm with CBC, I'm wondering if you could answer that question in French for us. Oh my us. goodness. Uh, sorry, yeah, just some, some of the comments about uh, diverse, diversifying the mortgage market for a sort of a more general audience as opposed to a, a business audience, if you could in French. Okay. Um, mais uh, en ce qui concerne le, le, le marché pour les hypothèques, uh, on, on suppose que durant une période de temps, on peut voir une évolution uh, dans le marché où on a, on a plus de choix pour les consommateurs, pour les, pour les uh, prêteurs, uh, et uh, avec les choix qui sont, uh, uh, représentent une source de stabilité pour le système. Et en particulier, euh, le, le développement d'un marché où c'est possible d'avoir une un hypothèque plus longue que cinq ans, c'est possible aujourd'hui, mais c'est pas bien connu. Mais euh, ça, ça offre pour un prix euh, de stabilité pour le, le, le consommateur, particulièrement les, le, le, les gens qui achètent la, premier, la première maison. Uh, deuxième chose, pour développer un marché de MBS, ça, ça vous, vous donne une, uh, une alternative, une source alternative pour le financement des hypothèques pour les institutions plus, uh, plus petites uh, qui sont uh, actives uh, dans le marché. Et enfin, de, de considérer les autres dessins des hypothèques comme par exemple euh, les hypothèques avec la participation, c'est-à-dire on fait une euh, un, 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 un hypothèque où euh, le risque est partagé entre le prêteur et l'emprunteur. Alors ce sont juste des exemples, il y a beaucoup d'autres possibilités, mais pour moi c'est étonnant de voir qu'il n'y avait aucune, presque aucune euh, évolution dans le marché des hypothèques Donna Mavi. Are there any other questions? If not, that concludes the press conference. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Governor Polos. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks very much.